The Structure Cycle Works SCW1 is a full carbon, full suspension enduro bike that rolls on 27.5 inch wheels and has a touch more than 150 millimeters of travel front and rear. It's also, well, let's just face it, it's a head turner. I mean, just look at it. But it's not just different for the sake of being different. In this video, find out why the linkage front suspension on this bike is making more than just a splash in the cycling industry as perhaps a truly viable replacement for the standard telescoping front suspension fork that we're all used to. Oh, and the prominent WTF on the thumbnail? I wasn't trying to be vulgar. It's actually the term that the company uses to describe the linkage front suspension. It stands for without telescoping fork, which is pretty clever and coincidentally makes for pretty good thumbnail text. Over the past few weeks, I've taken this thing down some of the rowdier trails in Southern California Trails like Rocket, Lynx, and Five Oaks in Aliso, and Chutes Ridgeline in Santiago Oaks. And these are all trails that represent sort of the upper limit of my riding abilities, or at least my comfort zone. And the thing that stands out most about the structure, and where I'm going to start this discussion, is that the front end really seems to track the ground well. Now this isn't the only thing I noticed, I'll get into the other stuff in just a minute, but it is critically important because if your tires are skipping over rocks, or bouncing off of roots, or otherwise airborne, you physically can't do things like turn or accelerate or rather importantly stop. Now the ability of the front tire of this bike to track the ground so well of course is largely attributed to the linkage style front suspension which is a drastic departure from the traditional front suspension fork and affords in my opinion two primary benefits over its more standard telescoping relative. Now the first is the smoothness of the linkage suspension. Now as opposed to a telescoping fork which is notoriously subject to stiction due to friction and binding in the seals, the linkage suspension is entirely supported by sealed cartridge bearings, and aside from the seals and the shock, there's virtually no binding present in the front suspension at all. Now this creates an incredibly smooth front suspension that you can feel from the moment you hop on the bike. Now second is the geometric benefit that isn't so apparent at first glance. Modern mountain bikes have all been trending towards longer, slacker geometry, and in particular the head tube angles have consistently been getting slacker, or in other words, less vertical, and more raked out, primarily because it yields more stability and control when descending. Now when a traditional front fork compresses, the effective head tube angle steepens because the bike is basically just pivoting about the rear axle. So all that stability associated with a slack head tube angle kind of goes out the window during hard compressions, in theory, when you need it the most. Now in contrast, the Structure SCW1 linkage suspension has a solution to this issue engineered directly into the frame's kinematics. And because it's essentially just a four bar linkage in the front end, designers were able to create a configuration where the head tube no longer steepens under compression. In fact, the design is such that under pure pitch, which is a front compression with no rear compression, much like a hardtail, the head tube angle basically remains constant at 66 degrees through the entire stroke, whereas a traditional head tube on a bike with a telescoping fork would steepen by almost 10 degrees. Additionally, under heave, which I believe is a term where both the front and the rear are compressed equally, the head tube angle actually slackens to about 58 degrees, further stabilizing the ride when deep in the bike's travel. Now, contrary to what others have said, this doesn't mean that the wheelbase actually lengthens. Rather, the suspension was designed to roughly maintain a constant wheelbase through its travel, which is different from a traditional bike whose wheelbase actually shortens a bit during hard compressions. So those are the sort of two fundamental effects of the linkage suspension. You got smoother actuation and a geometry that doesn't steepen under compression. Now other secondary benefits include a stiffer and lighter front end and somewhat counterintuitively, less maintenance. Now since the actual fork is nothing more than two rigid carbon stanchions that are well supported by four linkage members, the front end is said to be 25% stiffer, I'm not sure how that's quantified, and of course the front end is also way lighter than a telescoping fork. Now that's not to say that the bike overall is a featherweight. On my scale, the complete bike comes in at 35.9 pounds, which is pretty typical for an enduro bike, if not on the heavier side. But you have to keep in mind that this is a pre-production demo unit that's been circulating for quite some time now. I believe the latest and greatest iteration is lighter and certainly more refined. Now I can already see you typing down in the comments, what about the maintenance? And aren't there like a ton of bearings to maintain and replace? Now yes it is true that the linkage front end is accompanied by more than 10 additional pivot bearings, one very critical spherical bearing, and not one, but two headsets. But according to the spec sheet, they're mostly all standard. And of course, the idea is that replacing a bunch of bearings every few years is less of a chore than servicing your fork after every 50 hours of riding or so. Now, whether or not you think so, that's the trade-off nonetheless. So that's the basic rundown of the bike. 
Of course, the big question is how does it actually perform on the trail? And ultimately, is it worth making the jump from the tried and true telescoping front fork? Well, that's, I mean, that's an impossible question to answer since ultimately it's personal choice, but I'll start by sharing my experiences on the bike, which I've been riding for the last few weeks. Now, descending on this bike is interesting, and it definitely takes a few runs to get used to. Now, while the wheelbase doesn't actually get longer in compression, remember it stays roughly constant, it is true that the wheelbase of a traditional bike actually does get a little bit shorter under compression. So this actually corresponds to the sensation that the SCW gets longer through tight turns, even when it's just maintaining a constant wheelbase. Now, I think because of this, at first it seems like the bike wants to go wide through turns, and so my initial instinct was to kind of muscle it through the corners. But then and during a recent ride, Alan from the channel MTB Alan, who also reviewed this bike, pointed out that this issue could be resolved simply by leaning the bike further into turns, which is actually better technique anyways. So when I started to lean the bike into turns more so than I was used to, something kind of clicked right away and it just started to rail through the corners almost effortlessly. Now I can't say exactly why this is the case, but I'm supposing that it's partially due to the slackening of the head tube angle and the resulting consistent length wheelbase through the corners. Now even though it feels long through tight turns, it actually became more predictable after a few rides. And then of course when plowing through the chunk, the front end is just so active and I think serves to keep the front tire on the ground more than with the regular fork, which again will help in just about every scenario, whether cornering, accelerating, or braking. Now interestingly, I think this corresponded to a more chattery ride feel at the handlebars, but not necessarily in a bad way. Now the way I see it is that the bike is kind of giving you more feedback from the ground since it's tracking better. Remember when you're skipping over rocks or bouncing over rocky terrain, you're not getting any feedback while your tire is off the ground. And then there's these steeps. Usually when things get really steep, a telescoping front fork can actually make things feel more steep since again, as it compresses, the head tube angle is actually steepening, which can result in sending the rider over the handlebars. Now the thought here is that down steep chutes where you're at the limit, the structure front end will actually maintain its geometry and not, for lack of a better term, collapse like a telescoping fork. Now the SCW1 front end gives you more to push against when sending down really steep rollers. Now it's true, I generally err on the side of caution and I rarely go over the bars to begin with. So I don't have too much data to confirm whether or not instances of over the handlebars are objectively reduced, but I can say that I felt pretty confident going through steep stuff, if not a touch more than on a regular bike. And I do realize that this is pretty specific stuff, head tube angles and linkage design and such, but zooming out a little bit, the bike does ride just like a bike. Now, while there are some things to get used to when jumping on the SCW1, you'll adjust before the end of your first ride. Now, like I said, it rewards good riding technique, and if you can properly lean the bike over through turns, you'll be pleasantly surprised. So is there anything I didn't like about it? Well, that's tough because it was certainly a lot of fun to ride. Now, I'll be clear that nothing about the actual ride quality struck me as negative. In fact, from a pure performance standpoint, I'd say it's just as good if not slightly better than the current state of the art. My only potential concerns lie in the longevity of the design. Now first is with the spherical bearing at the front steering linkage. Because the fork and handlebars are totally decoupled, they need to be connected by another linkage that can compress as the front wheel tracks over bumps on the ground. Now while this joint only supports a lateral load proportional to the steering torque, it's still critical as any play whatsoever would result in a disconnect between the handlebars and the wheel, which would be very bad. Now, as far as price, some might say that the frame set is prohibitively expensive at $5,500 US in mid 2022. However, I'd also point out that the frame set cost does include both shocks. And of course you wouldn't need to buy a fork since it's all integrated. Now, when you look at a high-end carbon frame set plus the cost of a high-end telescoping fork, then it's really about a wash, and the SCW1 isn't actually any more expensive than a high-end frame set and a fork. Now the last thing that I'll mention, and it's a serious consideration based on my experience, is the stop and chats. Now until a bike like this is more mainstream, there's just no way you're gonna avoid fielding questions about the bike every time you go out. Now I'll admit, for the first few outings, it was kind of fun to explain the bike and the technology and to chat it up with other riders. But when it becomes routine to spend 15 to 20 minutes every ride not riding, it got a bit disruptive. I became kind of a grumpy dude that actually avoided other trail goers just to avoid another five minute stop and chat. And that, 
Well, that just made me kind of upset with myself. Biking and the accompanying stoke should be shared, and part of what makes the sport so fun is interacting with strangers with a shared passion. So the fact that I was actively avoiding riders, well, I don't have an answer for that. I will say that if you're the type of person who can endlessly chat it up with others and doesn't mind explaining the bike from scratch to strangers every time you go out, then it may not be an issue for you. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. The Structure SCW1 is a huge departure from the traditional telescoping fork, but I think ultimately the ends perhaps justify the means. It rides really well, and I think those riders who push their bikes and their abilities to the limits will certainly enjoy the benefits associated with this bike. Now, personally, with my, we'll say, intermediate skill set and relatively conservative riding style, I don't think I'd fully reap the benefits of the linkage technology, and I'll be sticking with my telescoping fork for now anyways. Thanks for watching and thanks again for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.